All right, and today I am going to be doing a one-year review on my OS23 Frontier Bandsaw Mill. This company is a branch of the Norwood Company, and they started, from what I understand, started this company because of the, the big influx in um, people starting to go doing like off-grid activities and whatnot and they they just need to make more saws so either way that's the way I understand it but it's uh overall I I do like this saw I'm gonna go over I don't know I guess some some things that I see as flaws on this machine and that, that could be changed maybe they'll take my opinion and do that maybe they won't or you know it, it really doesn't matter to me, but I'm, I'm doing my modifications and upgrades as I need to do them anyway. But I'm just going to give you a, a no BS review on this. I'm not paid for doing this. And I'm probably going to stay behind the camera as much as I can here. Just so I can kind of walk you around the machine and whatnot. But I guess let's go ahead and get started on just different things that I do and do not like about this. And give you my overall thoughts about things so right now you're actually sitting on top of a uh, a batch of two by fours I just did and they, they're not perfect but that's not because of the saw that's because of me and the project that I'm working on which is a uh, basically a glorified outhouse or a modernized outhouse it will have power and everything like that it's just a uh, bathroom house outside of my current structure so either way enough of that things that I dislike about this saw um, number one I'll just come back over here really quick and show you. you you're gonna have a hard time seeing this but on this track when I got it out of the box there is an imperfection in the track right here and it causes a bit of a step down. I don't know if you can see it, but there, it'll hang up right there. So we have the rollers going this way. There was an imperfection there. You can feel it when you're rolling the saw head down the track. But as far as affecting the performance of it, I can't tell anything affecting the performance of it. And it doesn't necessarily bother me aside from the fact that something like that you would expect it to have been cleaned up from the factory now sorry for the mess out here it's been hot super hot and I got all kinds of water bottles over here on the ground but we've been drinking water like crazy and cutting wood like crazy as well <clears throat> now moving up to the power head something or the saw head I should say something that I don't necessarily care for at all and is going to have to be addressed pretty soon because I'm getting sick and tired of, of tightening stuff is that I noticed from the factory and I don't know if it was just because they were rushing these things out or what it was but when I ordered this um, they were originally like a 15 day backlog and I waited to see if that would go away and it ended up actually turning into nearly a 30 to 45 day backlog and now they're currently sitting at two to four weeks backlog to get these out. So I don't know if it was just a factory thing or whatever. But a lot of the little nuts and bolts and stuff on the saw head itself, um, you, they're, they're loose. You need to go over everything and double check stuff and make sure you're not rattling it loose. And uh, that's just going to be a, become a general thing if you buy one of these saws anyway. And that's for any saw, I'm sure, not just this one. But one thing that I really didn't like about this is this little plastic nut for the blade guard. Let me go ahead and open this up. And again, this saw has been getting used pretty pretty well the past week because we're building. So it's full of sawdust and everything. I actually just cut these boards just a moment ago. But the this blade guard right here this is probably my number one thing that just really just upsets me is that this little plastic nut will come loose like crazy and i'll show you what happens here 
if you don't catch it and it can happen mid cut which really sucks but you pull that out and if you look on the back side here you see how it was painted and you can see where the blade has gone ahead and slammed into that and stripped all that off that actually just happened to us last night and made that big old dig in there before it would only do like these little nicks these little, we had these little nicks right here that came in but this dug in last night because for some reason we started throwing blades but we will get into that in a minute but number one dislike right there is that plastic nut is just I know it's meant to be for convenience and help you just unscrew that thing and get it out of there when you need to get it out of there but it will rattle loose on you and that thing will get to chattering and it'll it'll loosen out forward and that thing will tip and go right into that blade so you really got to keep an eye on that right there so I think that that could seriously be upgraded and done differently you can it though you can get this thing tightened in easy enough with a pair of pliers but uh, judging from the way it is designed that is meant to be finger tightened or tightened by your fingers if you know what I mean because it definitely has to be more than finger tight because this will rattle out on the regular so watch out for that but I <sighs> again that, that right there is probably the irritating thing because you get to buying blades for these and tearing them up and it can be a pain in the butt. Now, the next thing, and I'm going to leave this off for a moment because I'm going to show you a few other things down here. We have our blade guides. These, um, I, <laughs> you can see this, and again, I'm sure this is a, a common, common thing because this whole machine, when you're running it, it is, it is nothing but a vibration factory, and. I get it, things vibrate loose, I'm not saying that they don't, but when I am going down a track after I literally have just tightened this thing and tighten it every single time that I move, it, it gets to be irritating. And the bigger part about it that really irritates me, and you can't really see this very well because it's all covered in sawdust, but they use Allen screws in here. And I'm not opposed to Allen screws. I think they have their place and their time and their purpose. But this is so annoying because they're so small and you can't get an Allen head or an Allen wrench in there very well to tighten them. And everyone who works with Allen screws knows that you can only go so tight with these things before they start stripping. And that's the problem I'm having already right here is that it's stripped out to the point where I'm using vice grips to tighten it. And it's a pain in the butt, so I'm going to be yanking that out and putting actual some type of machine screw or something in there that can be easily tightened with a ratchet or a wrench because that would be way, way, way better in my opinion. So I will be doing that and getting it done because this loosens up and about the time you get this one tightened in and staying in place, then the other one will loosen up and right now I've got it tightened and staying in place. But that right there is my number two complaint about this. So you, you have to keep an eye on it. And again, I know things vibrate, things rattle. It's going to come loose. It's part of the maintenance. You have to keep an eye on it. And you have to take care of things. So I know that is part of it. It's just irritating that it happens so much. Now, let me see. What can I think of inside of here that I really have? Um, the blade, the belt tensioner i haven't yet to figure this out i ha i don't know if there's something that's like seized up in my machine and it's been like that um because it looks as if these two pieces of metal are separate here and this should be your tensioning screw but i have taken this off and tightened and tensioned and done what i can and followed directions and everything and it just it won't move it will not move so I took the other ones out down here, which make a lot more sense. And as soon as you loosen these up right here, it will move no problem. And you can tension that belt. That's a lesser issue though, right there, whatever. I'm not overly concerned about that. The belts have held up pretty well. Um, there is some wear on them because I was having some issues with the tracking, but I did figure that out. So my belts are a little burnt, but that's my fault. That is not the machine's fault. 
Um, let me see here. Moving around, we're going to go ahead and leave leave the blade the blade shield up right now. Oh yes, hang on one moment. We're going to go around over here and a complaint that I have about this machine. <laughs> and we're going to look down in here really quick. And I understand this is a safety issue, and I'm fairly certain I voided a warranty or something somewhere, but whatever, I don't care. So when you get the sawdust exhaust port from the factory, you'll look down in here, see if I can get this for you. From the factory, it has these little wires built in all along here, right here. And I've cut mine out. And I know this is for a safety issue so people can't be sticking their hands and stuff up in there. But I had to remove mine because I, after one pass on a log, it was so plugged up. It was just, it was creating a fire hazard and was smoking like crazy. So I just took mine and I snipped them off and I bent them up there to the edge where they can be bent back down if they need to be. But that right there, they need to figure something else out for that because it is, I understand safety. I get it. I really do. And I do not advise anyone to do what I did. So do as I say, not as I do. Don't cut those out like I did because it is a safety hazard and you don't want to get stuff up in there. But it is a huge freaking problem for getting the sawdust out. I just knocked my two by fours over. All right, next, what do we got here? Okay, small issue, nothing that is like really incredibly huge, but, and I'm sure this is just a replacement part over time, but if you watch right here on my watering system, if it'll drip for me now, as of last night, so this is a, almost exactly a year that I've had this and been running it, but right there goes the drip. That started dripping and the fuller the tank is, the more it will drip. So that's kind of a pain in the butt, but again, that's a smaller thing. Not really complaining about it, just making it aware that it does happen. So, and I'm sorry if I'm getting you all over here. I'm not used to using this wide angle lens. Okay, moving on, what do we have here? So, again, I know this is a safety thing and they don't do it for a reason, I'm very sure. But if you, if you could lock in your throttle, it would be a much, much nicer thing because this does get to be a pain in the butt when you're trying to uh, run it. And mainly because I added the auto watering system, which does not come standard on here. And that is this cable that runs up over here into a little pincher device down in there that simply pinches off the water line that is all and when you add that extra cable to your throttle handle it makes it a lot more tense why i don't know it's literally just a cable there there's nothing crazy about it but it does make it a bit of a pain in the butt now another thing that i had and again these are just small i'm like really really nitpicking right now but when you spend um you know thirty five hundred dollars thirty seven hundred dollars on a setup you expect it to kind of come together and working properly and then you know some of this was stuff that just should have not been missed whenever they assembled the power head or saw head unit my throttle cable down in here was not even connected properly and we actually just figured that out because all of a sudden the engine dogged down and we couldn't figure out why but you know being mechanically inclined we started tearing into things and looking at it and our cable just wasn't hooked up right and it had slipped out of place and was giving us about half to one quarter power on the machine which you know no big deal fixed it clamped it back in place got it all going again also when you get this mill it comes standard with a seven horsepower briggs on it and i have the optional and upgraded 10. i will say that this motor has done uh just fine i like it and in fact i would encourage you to get the upgraded engine because i think it is actually necessary for this mill because this is a hobbyist mill 
and it says it can do up to a 23 inch log which i have yet to try but i have done a 20 inch and man oh man does it that engine really get to grunting and you have to go slow so and i'm also cutting oak red oaks and white oaks and that's you know <laughs> that it's not exactly the easiest wood to cut but it is what it is get the upgraded motor if you get it what is next this uh i'm not and i'm not i'm not talking bad about this machine don't get me wrong i'm not talking bad about it. there's just things that you need to pay attention to now something that i had trouble with actually yesterday i had family in town and they're helping me work on this bathroom house and so we started uh going through and fine-tuning the machine and we had a bit of an issue and the tracking of the blade just for whatever reason, well, let me rewind on that. The tension of the blade, for some reason, would would not lock in place. This right here is your blade tensioner. Blade tensioner. And when you turn it, uh, I've never had this problem until just, uh, it, was, it was yesterday. We fired the machine up after a good hard day's run the day before. And this blade tensioner would just start spinning itself backwards by the vibration of the machine and it would just walk itself back out so we paused i actually called <coughs> i called frontier and got on with their uh their customer support and everything and they they were very kind very nice people um but they had their own customer support for customer support and they had to get a hold of their techs and they took down my number to call me back because they said they've never heard of this issue before which uh, it's out on the internet and it's around, but uh, they said they had never heard of it before. And well, that's that. But it would just, like I said, it would just spin itself around and back out. So one thing that we did is go ahead and take a piece of wire, as you can see right here. Get back here a little bit better so you can see it. This little piece of wire and we drilled a hole through and wired it down now today the funny thing is, is i don't know what was going on is it won't it's not vibrating anymore it's not vibrating out so i don't know what it was and what we did but i did figure out that somewhere in the in between the tracking bolts and the actual tensioning blade tensioning bolts here right here and right here i backed this tensioning screw out and kind of felt something pop almost as if it was hanging up and I haven't had any problems now and I, I just ran these logs or the, these boards off right here because last night around midnight or so one we had a blade snap completely in half a wood miser blade snap completely in half which I'm kind of mad about because we ran it for all of like 15 minutes and it broke clean on the weld and it wasn't over tightened or anything like that you can see where they overground it at the factory but it broke clean clean in half at the weld but then after that um that we could not get this machine to retract for some reason and it would just pitch the blade and pitch the blade and pitch the blade so i gave up and went to bed and then came back out here put it on and bam just like that i mean don't get me wrong it took me a couple times because like i said this there's something locking up back in here in the blade tensioning and i think i got it freed up but i just i don't know what it is because this is an entirely sealed unit i'm sure i can get it apart with no problem i mean i shouldn't say entirely sealed it's all bolted together but i do not know what's going on in here and i'm not about to start ripping into this i need to call call them again and find out what's going on but as far as function and and working like i said i just kind of i didn't beat on anything i just i backed the blade tension all the way off and i heard something pop inside of there and, it, and it, you could feel it change and i kind of rattled it around maybe it got some sawdust in there some junk in there i don't know very likely because if you if you didn't see all the sawdust over here man this thing will make mountains and mountains and mountains of freaking sawdust you will never need sawdust again i'm telling you you'll never you'll never want for it again you'll have all you need um so what else can i show you here that is something you might look out for 
Um, oh geez, there, there's just a couple small things. Again, I'm not talking bad about this machine, but it's got its things. Okay, so this right here, this little foam handle, you may as well just go ahead and rip that off because it, this will happen after your first pass on a log. It's cheap. I mean, it's nice. It's a nice thought, but get something else for a handle because that is going to come off of there and it's going to, you know, just kind of be a pain in the butt. We haven't ripped ours off yet. Don't know why. Um, what else here? Another thing is that uh, I, I'm guessing that the sticker guy was having a bad day or something. Which, because they're, he rolled the sticker around on the bottom. Again, these are minute things. But rolled the sticker around the bottom. Why, I don't know. Because uh, he had all that space up there. So that's kind of, you know, simple job. Kind of irritating, whatever. Now, and I'm, I'm really picking on this thing, man. Like, for stupid crap. And it's not that it really matters to me. It's just stuff that I want to point out. Um, what else? I have had a problem down here, but this is my, my fault, and this log dog, <clears throat> I bent this screw, so I have to get this fixed, because it's stripped out in there, and it won't come out now, but that's my fault. Oh, what else do we have here? The leveling of this machine is kind of goofy. But that's, you know, whatever. It's, that has, it's nothing really major. It's just kind of a pain because in order to level this, you have to have the actual saw head off of the machine. And you have to level the track with a string, almost as if you were setting a foundation for a home or something. And it's, I'm sure there's other ways. I just haven't looked into it exactly. But it is a little goofy, but it's, it's more of a pain than anything else. Um, this does come with a set of, and again, I'm sorry for the camera, I'm carrying it around here. This does come with a set of long log holders and a set of short log holders, which I have installed right now, standard. And one thing I will say about that, and this is nothing against the company because, again, these are, these are items that are provided that you need for sure in order to run the machine and it's good that they come with two different sizes um, when you get to doing bigger stuff or longer stuff or even shorter stuff you are going to want more than than two of these there's one here that i have mounted and there's one down here we are set right now to a minimum of a i do believe it is seven foot three that will lock in between these things but you can adapt them on here here and here on the bunks and I would advise you to get a couple more probably two more would be perfect and space them accordingly up and down the machine because it will give you a better setup and an easier time with cutting different length logs also I would do the same thing let me turn my phone off here sorry I would do the same thing with your log dog get at least one more of these if you're going to be doing anything over eight to ten foot because it's going to help keep your uh, your log chatter or shake head shake i think is what they call it down or something like that it's going to keep it down and your your logs aren't going to be all over the place which it's not horrible but it's enough to kind of freak you out if you're not used to it and it really could end up hurting you and the machine if you're not careful and don't know what you're doing. So I would just recommend getting another one of those. <coughs> this particular machine as well, a little bit of specs on it here from the factory. Um, you can go ahead and cut 11 foot with it straight out of the box. I went ahead and I ordered one additional log bunk, which gave me seven more feet so i can cut up to 17 foot i believe is what 17 18 foot something like that i think it's 18 foot but we don't push it because that's that would take it and make it to where you're actually shoving the log right back against the blade and getting started whereas if you start it right here and run it clear down to the other end where the saw can go it's 17 foot which we actually did yesterday and it works fine 
but you know I I wanted the extra length I'm glad I got it I actually think I'm gonna get a couple more of these uh, bunk extensions because I do have lumber and you can look out here I do have lumber that is long enough and straight enough which is surprising for some of the oaks but I do have lumber that's long enough I can get up to like uh, I think the longest one's been 30 foot for me and I'm telling you if you can save those extra chunks dude whew, you can make some wonderful lumber over here is just kind of like a random scrap possibilities pile that can be cut into something that we didn't quite want to get rid of yet okay now I think I've pretty well covered all the dumb little things that you know more they're more of an annoyance than anything else but I guess that kind of comes with the territory of owning a mill my overall thoughts on this mill is if if you're going to go out and buy one I I would definitely endorse this I definitely would endorse this OS 23 you know just to just to call it you know what it is uh, price to to value on this I, I think that they're right around uh, $27, $2,800 if you go with the, I guess what you call the bare bones, which is almost essentially what I have. I did, like I said, I did the bunk extension down here, which was, I think, an additional three to 400 bucks. I did buy these uh, uh, bunk legs so I can lift it up off the ground. I have not got them installed yet, and I have a whole set of them. That's just uh, for you know reference purposes. It does lift it up. I think it's about a foot off the ground. Plus, then you have your adjustment feet down here, which are standard with the machine. But they bolt up in here, and then these feet go into the bottom of those legs. So I did buy those as well. I forget how much they cost. I want to say it was like around a, somewhere between 75 and 150 bucks. And I also, again, like I said, I got the upgraded engine, which comes standard with a 7 horsepower Briggs. And I got the, uh, the 10 horsepower Briggs. And again, I would recommend doing that. So all in all, oh, and I had the, the auto watering system that I had added on, <laughs> which I think should probably be a standard deal, but you know, whatever. It does come with a watering system, but it's a, a continuous run and kind of a pain in the butt when you, you go to uh, having to refill this because you can have varying degrees of water flow and it will empty out super fast and you know you cut a log and you forget to turn that thing off boom there goes all your water you'll lose it i think it's about a about a five not quite a five gallon tank and it, it will last quite a while um i'd say you get like this log up here this log right here we actually have prep to go on the mill this is a what did we cut that down to that is an do, 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 do. Yeah, that is 16 foot that's left there of white oak and that you we're going to cut that down into another two chunks of eight and you can do probably two to three of those logs and it, it's on the on the small end it's probably about 12 to 14 inches and on the big end it's probably oh just judging from here it's probably somewhere in the neighborhood of like 14 to it's actually bigger it's like probably 16 to 18 inches on the big end but either way as a size reference like you'll probably do that log cut in half or no cut down three times to eight foot so eight foot logs you'll probably go through one of these tanks of water or close to it maybe a little more so it does last for quite a while and also that depends on how you know to operate the machine and everything but I'm going I'm to shut this even though I know I have to put that blade guard back on there. But as far as, again, performance and value for the money, I don't think you can honestly beat this machine. It, I mean, it is, it, it is in areas I think it could use some improvement. And, you know, but I think with anything, you know, that's the way it goes. I've had no problem with the company. I mean, the, the tech support, like I said, they're nice enough, but I haven't heard anything back from them yet. They are very uh, very quick to answer the phone, but I'm still waiting on an answer here. Uh, I haven't had any uh, 
any major, major issues aside from that blade tensioning deal, uh, which I'm kind of figuring out, I think is attributed to just all the gunk and crap that flies up in these because it does get messy very quick, as you can see. And, you know, your work area should stay clean, but I'm in the middle of the woods off grid and I don't care. I, I'm letting all this stuff go back into the ground for compost and it helps with the mud and and all that so you know helps helps kind of prevent erosion in my opinion uh, but overall I mean I really do enjoy the machine uh, I've had it for a year I got about you know somewhere in the neighborhood of thirty five thirty five hundred dollars total into it between my little different add-ons I am gonna get different log dogs probably the cam dog setup that they have they do offer a bunch of different accessories and a trailer kit for this thing which uh, would be really nice to have I will tell you though right here at the end that if there's one thing that I would recommend doing with this mill or probably any mill is that I you can see I have it mounted up down here it's not I shouldn't say mounted but sitting on the little square concrete blocks I want to and we fully intended to this uh, week while my family was here to get this mounted onto concrete pillars and just have it permanently affixed because you are going to get annoyed if you do not have a perfectly level grade that you can set this thing on because you're going to be leveling and re-leveling and re-leveling anytime it rains if, it, if you got this sitting the way that I do anytime it rains you can't touch it you have to you have to wait for it to dry out because any additional weight and that's mainly to do to my terrain it, you're just gonna have to re-level it so I would recommend getting it on a flat surface something really solid you know preferably you know anchored into the ground with some concrete you know be make sure you can remove it easily easily enough but you're gonna want to have something that's really really good in a fixed location either that or have the trailer on it where you have the the jack adjustments and stuff like that but overall I do like this mill I have nothing like horrible to say about it I am basically just nitpicking little things that could be done better in my opinion um, and, and that that's really it I enjoy this machine it has made a lot of lumber for me um, let me go walk you over here really quick and show you what we did in a matter of sorry all my trash out here we had kind of we were partying and cooking and doing all kinds of stuffing and working and this is our glorified outhouse these beams are five by five why that dimension came up it was just because what we had it wasn't anything specific we literally just ran with it and and started throwing things together and making it work because that's what we wanted to do but we have five by fives uh these are all even though this is on a grade this is on a grade these are all 13 foot tall and I cut those out of one log. All four of them came out of one log. We just, we just quarter cut it and split it down and called it good. We have one buys, which are one by, one by, one by 10 by 10. We cut all those on here and we did all this from Monday. Today is Friday. My brothers left this morning. And, uh, but we cut all the lumber, as assembled all of this, and concreted these things in, in uh, four days. And it uh, is actually fun. And I can show you this, um, just as a reference, that these log, or these, these, these five by fives, this is the butt of that log that came off. The reason why we did what we did with it is cracked and we we wanted to get more but it was cracked really really bad and had some some stuff going on with it and this side was good but this was the leftover so actually this whole log was 16 foot ish i think it's actually 17 foot if you look at it it's about four feet four feet of log right there but we assembled this whole thing and you know there you go we got more we got more lumber out here that we got to cut but we cut all this, all these two buys and everything. Nothing here is perfect, but as far as what you can achieve with that mill, I mean, this thing is rock solid, man. It's all oak. We did all this. It was super fun. Neat little project. It's going to help us and our family. 
And again, I really like the, uh, the old OS 23 over here. They call it the entry level, the entry level model that they have. And I would probably agree with that because they do have much fancier and nicer models. But as far as working and being able to do what you need to do on maybe your homestead or you just want to cut some logs or you got different woodworking ideas and plans that you want to do, I would uh, I would definitely endorse this mill. I would I'd say it's a good buy. I would not go probably on the the 23 inch side of the logs unless it's a soft wood because the hardwoods really bog it down. But and probably pick some different blades. I, I didn't care for the saber tooth blades, but that's my opinion. And the saber tooth blade is the frontier blade. But again, I really like this machine. Uh, I hope this helped uh, helped someone maybe make a decision. If not, uh, oh well. Uh, I apologize. But if it did, and you uh, you like the things I went over, go ahead and uh, give me a a like and a thumbs up there. Whatever you got to do, comment, leave some comments or something. If there's something you want to see, or if you have any questions, just let me know. And uh, thanks for watching. Have a good day.